Here's another illustration of why and how a circuit like a Joule Thief is a bit difficult to measure using uh, what I might call naive or ordinary uh, power measurement techniques. Uh, what I've done here is I've taken the standard Joule Thief I guess you can see that it's on That's the LED showing that it's on and I've put a 1 ohm resistor in series with the LED and in this loop of wire here so uh, instead of looking at the voltage across the LED what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the voltage drop across that 1 ohm resistor to get a current indication that is also measuring the same current as the LaCroix current probe here Okay, so you can see that I've got the the probe tip lead on the LED side of the resistor and the probe reference lead on the battery ground side of the resistor right? and the, oops, sorry, the pink trace, red trace is what's coming from that probe so this is the voltage drop across that resistor which equates to uh, the current by Ohm's law. And then this is a direct reading of the current uh, from the LaCroix non-contact current probe. Okay. Now I want you to notice something here. See the shape of those voltage peaks? You can see a little bit of ringing there. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ground reference lead right here which is hooked to this end of that blue wire and I'm just going to move it to the other end of this blue wire here like this just like that okay so electrically the two ends of that blue wire should be just the same right because the blue wire goes from here to here and it's just a length of wire. But look at the difference in the voltage trace that you get there. It's a great deal of difference. Turn the level up a little bit so it's more stable. Okay, so that difference just occurs from moving the ground reference lead from one uh, electrically equivalent point to the other. So here we'll do it again. We'll take the ground reference lead and move it to the other end of that blue wire. And you can see the effect that it has on the voltage trace. Now, is it because the current probe is there? Well, let's just take the current probe out. Okay. So now, just looking at that one signal, and I'm going to take the, the reference wire and move it to the other end of that blue wire. And there we go. So I'm going from there to there. It's just a length of ordinary wire. And the reason that this is happening is because there's actually enough inductance in that little current loop to cause a ringing and an attenuation in the signal that's coming through there. So the point of this demonstration is that current monitoring has to be done correctly. And if you have a circuit that has substantial high frequency components, as this one does, right, then inductances, stray inductances, can have a very large effect on the readings that you're getting from your instrumentation. So 
number one, you should use good circuit layout techniques. In other words, short leads and consistent layout. And you should get away from using clip leads as much as possible because they add a surprising amount of inductance to any circuit that you're dealing with. And they could be skewing your results uh, completely. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.